Hi, this is Paul Salt from iPhone Dev TV. Welcome to a Kickstarter update. I haven't done one of these in a long time, uh, probably since my last Kickstarter update about my new project. So I've been working on these brand new courses for Swift. We ran a survey. You asked for Swift courses for the advanced topics. And what I've been doing is working towards getting those stretch goals complete. So if you haven't already started the courses, there's a ton of great content. There's a ton of great new content that I wanna highlight. So looking at this, we have four of the eight stretch goals that I've been able to complete as part of these new courses. And so I wanna give you access to those. You can jump down or you can just listen to the rest of the video and I'm gonna explain all the different parts, what's going on. Uh, it's been a busy two years for me. So I've been working pretty much nonstop on course materials ever since uh, this Kickstarter ended. There's been a few apps in progress and, and sort of things that are, are helping me make sure that the materials that I'm teaching are actually accurate. They're gonna help you make either a game or an app. And then I'm gonna be teaching you the best practices so that you can get your app up and running using Xcode effectively, using Swift effectively, or if you wanna learn Objective-C because there's a lot of jobs who are looking for Objective-C experience, that's a great uh, place to start as well. Now, the new courses are a little bit different than my original courses. I'm just looking at my notes here. I, I think I've done a lot of a, a much improved job on, on these courses. They're bigger, there's way more videos. They'll take you directly into building applications rather than starting with the programming topics. One of the things that I didn't like about the Objective-C course, my, my very first one, was that it was more focused on teaching you the concepts but it's really hard to understand why you need to learn these concepts. So students kept asking me why, why, why? And I wanna answer that question for you because I think it's important. And so the best way to do that is to show you a full example, teach you how to build an app from scratch and do it in an hour and teach you a new concept that's gonna help you effectively create those apps and get you on the keyboard with hands-on coding. Because if you don't code, you don't understand this. I remember that when I worked for Apple, Back in 2008, I would ride my bike to work and then I would pull out the Big Nerd Ranch book and I would read a chapter and I tried to understand memory management and I tried to understand how to use Objective-C, how to do the app stuff, and I just didn't get it. And the reason I didn't get it was because I wasn't coding. I was sitting out on a park bench out in front of IL2, which is at Infinite Loop, which is where Apple's headquarters is. And I was just trying to understand the material. And granted, I'm a computer science person, I'm a programmer, I've been trained in this, I should be able to pick up a language, but it's hard to really understand the nuts and bolts and, and why you need to do things in a programming language when the concepts are completely different and when you don't have access to a computer. You really need a Mac, you need to be typing in the code as you watch the videos, you need to be trying the code exercises because those are where you're gonna be getting ideas for apps. Those are where you're going to be discovering how you can do different things and setting goals. Setting goals has been super effective for me, uh, completing my apps as well as working on these awesome course videos. I come up with a lot of code samples. I don't teach everything that I, I come up with just because there's so many different things, but I'm working towards making it so that there's more materials for you to get started. All right, so with that said, I just wanna highlight some of the features of the new courses and talk about how I am addressing the stretch goals that I promised in 2013. It's been a long time. I understand it's it's hard for me. This is my full-time job. I've been working on this 24-7 uh, pretty much since this Kickstarter ended. We, we started working on a game sort of when the Kickstarter first started and I wasn't fully focused on the course materials in the very beginning and I apologize for that. Um, but I didn't expect this to make so much money. I didn't expect to have so many people waiting on all these different things. And the stretch goals really put it over the top. So I'm trying to make up for that. And I wanna talk about the new way of teaching and sort of where I'm going for future course content. All right, so with the new courses, I'm providing captions that are gonna be easy for you to follow along. So if you're deaf or you're hard of hearing, uh, it's probably gonna be hard to listen to this video, but I'll see if I can get captions. I don't know if Kixer supports captions. Uh, but that's gonna make it easier for you to get started. And if you're international and English isn't your first language, this is gonna help you understand what I'm saying because sometimes it's hard, because I know I've, I've tried to learn foreign languages, it's hard to understand what a native speaker is speaking and when they speak really fast, and I tend to do that, it can be a little bit difficult. All right, so the other thing that's really important with these lessons is I want them to be 
lessons that you can start at any time. So you don't necessarily have to start at the beginning if that's not what you need to learn. I'm providing the before and after source code so that you can get started with any of the lessons at any point in these courses and always have a starting point and an ending point. So if you don't get something working, look at the solution and see what's wrong. The other thing is I really want you to be able to watch this anywhere, watch it offline, watch it on a plane, watch it on a train, watch it in the car, put it on your iPad, put it on your iPhone, put it on your Android device, wherever you want to learn iPhone development. I'm going to provide bulk access to download all the videos, to download all of the caption files. I've got SRT caption files for my new Swift courses. I don't have it for my older courses yet. Uh, it's something I might do, though I'd rather record new materials for Objective-C then make you suffer through some of my original materials because I, I'm doing a lot of I'm doing a much better job than I was before. Uh, the other thing I'm trying not to do is I'm trying not to edit as much. I I'm not going to edit this video at all because I think that it it makes more sense when it's real when it's a person talking to you, um, and just walking through and making some mistakes, making some blunders, saying things that I maybe didn't want to say, but I just want to get it out there because I think that's more useful than if I'm just sort of a, a, a robot instructing you how to do this stuff. And it's a creative process, so it's, it's not always straightforward. The other thing is that there's uh, going to be more challenges, more code exercises. This is something I'm trying to incorporate more into the actual flow of a video. I haven't gotten to that point in all of the, the new videos, but it's a new direction that I'm taking for all upcoming courses. And then there's hundreds of videos. So somehow I managed to turn this new 31 day course into a massive course. I have filmed over 295 videos over the past, I think six months since October. I, I'm not counting uh, very well right now. So that's three plus two, maybe five months. All right, so I've filmed a ton of videos. That has introduced its own issues. I have to keep track and back up everything. I have to be able to manage all these files at the request all these captions. I've spent thousands on captions for these new courses. So I want to make these courses the best courses possible for you. And I, I need your support and feedback so that I can keep on improving them and keep on improving the delivery. All right. And then you can tweak any of the 200 plus code samples. I have 205 code samples that you can download. And again, most of those have a before and after. There's only a few that just have the beginning step because it's just starting a project. So there is no before because there's nothing to start with except an idea. All right, so that's how you can get started. Uh, and then there's gonna be more comprehensive explanations. These are where you can listen to over 44 hours in my brand new Swift courses, all right? So now I wanna walk through, uh, and you can listen to this if you want to, I wanna walk through how I'm addressing four of the stretch goals that I promised in the original Kickstarter. And let's start off. All right, so I have a Swift app course and I have a Swift game course. The full names of these courses are Swift and iOS 8 apps in 31 days. That's what I'm going to call the Swift app course. Then we have the Sprite Kit and iPhone games in 31 days. Now I'm going to call that the Swift game course. So here are four courses that have been addressed by the brand new content that I've generated this past uh, five months. We've got the creating iPad apps, customize your user interface for iPads. All of the materials I've been developing have allowed you to create iPad apps. And this is a new feature in iOS 8 using auto layout and size classes, which is brand new to Xcode 6. So if you want to make iPad apps, this is the place to start. I walk you through the process in the, in the Swift app course. And then in the Swift game course, I'm actually doing a ton of auto layout and tips and tricks. And I'm actually breaking apart some of this material to include into a, a special series of short five to 10 minute videos that are gonna show you the, the short abbreviated version so that you don't need to watch a full course if you're just looking for some insight. All right, so that's a great place to start. Up next, uh, I had the delight your users with core animation and bring your app to life. So this was a course that I wanted to show you how to create animations and it's pretty easy, it's very easy in, in Swift to get started with that and you can add animations. And so in day one of the Swift app course, I show this off. It's great. I had a ton of students who experimented with it and created some really cool effects. We now have access to the dynamic system. So there's some special topics that I still wanna to touch upon. And I'm gonna be doing that in the game course where you can work with physics to make your apps feel chunkier and like meatier 
Uh, and what I mean by that is that you can have things falling, you can have things colliding and bouncing like rubber or bouncing sort of like a heavy object. And so you can transfer the, the notion of weight and mass into your applications, which can create some really interesting looking applications. All right, so the game course is gonna cover how to do more animations using not only the game animations, but going back to the UI kit because all of the UI in the game course is gonna be developed using auto layout and the iPhone UI. All right, up next was the core graphics to create a polished app. I teach how to get started in core graphics in the Swift app course. In day 17 and in day 25, I'm showing you how to get started with core graphics, how you can call the APIs. It's a little bit different in Swift than it is Objective-C. You don't have to do any memory management. It's all handled for you, which makes this way better. And then I'll show you how to, to create circle profile pictures using the Facebook API to download the photo and then customize it with a drop shadow, uh, a border, and a circle mask. So that's a really neat effect that you can use in your apps. And that's just scraping the tip of the iceberg. There might be some additional things that I do in the game course, but the game course does have access to additional APIs uh, for content blending that you'll get to see with like the particle effects where you can create explosions and things like that. All right, so then the, the fourth one that I've completed, or actually I will be completing in the game course is how to get up and running with the accelerometer. Now there's a couple of things that you have to, to figure out here. One is how to get the user data uh, two is how to calibrate and sort of use that data in your applications. And I guess the third thing that's really important is if you have shaky hands, guess what? You're going to get all of that data. And so how does your application deal with that? And so that's going to be covered in the game course. That's an upcoming lesson. I don't have it out just yet, unless you're watching this at a later date. Uh, as of March 6, we are still halfway through the game course. So there's a ton of content. I already have 60 videos, already have, I think, nine hours of content in that course, it's it's turning out really cool. I'm really excited about it. All right, so upcoming courses. There's four more stretch goals that I haven't really touched upon. Some of them are gonna be touched upon in my new real world app experience course, my real, real world app programming course. And then others, I'm either gonna do a mini course on to just get that content out there, or I will Think of something else. <laughs> so I, I haven't quite decided on how this is going to work out yet. These are four new courses and topics. Uh, so we've got the enhanced images with photos and filters and effects with core image. Now I do a little bit of the effects in the game course. So I'm going to get into blurring some images and, and stuff like that with core filters, um, but that's just going to be scratching the surface. So I, I really want to dig into this in the real world apps course. I'm going to show you how to do some of these advanced things so you can get started there. And then I didn't do the maps course yet. So a lot has changed with maps and I'm actually happy I didn't do this already because there's so many new APIs in iOS 8 and I'm looking forward to even more changes as Apple continues to improve the, the software. Um, so that's gonna be a separate course all on its own. I don't think that's gonna be part of the real world apps. All right, so next up we have uh, communicating with Bluetooth. Now, this has been something that's been on my mind for a very long time. I've wanted to get into this. I actually got my first breadboard the other day to just experiment with some Bluetooth devices. And I got a Bluetooth scale that I've been using and to track data that has an API that I could show you how to use. So that's still on the to-do list. I've, I've got ideas for hardware that I wanna make that's gonna integrate with the Bluetooth. I don't have an ETM, when this will be, but this is gonna be its own um, separate course along with maybe some introductions in the uh, the real world apps course. All right, so then the last uh, stretch goal was on how to store data in the cloud with web services. And this has changed a ton since I first announced this. It's way easier to get started with. And this is gonna be something that I am gonna cover extensively in the real world apps course, because that's where you need to learn how to make your app integrate with the web and how to do different things. Now, I do go over some pretty hefty code samples on how to connect to the App Store's API. So you can connect to the iTunes Search API and you can pull down the top apps on the App Store. So this is really exciting. You can pull down the images, you can pull down who's the author, the title, anything you want, and you could create a custom app that could present this information. So I show you how to do that in the Swift app course. And I show you also how to work with the Facebook SDK. So that's again, consuming someone else's web service, 
But the, the same techniques that you do for consuming are going to be the same techniques that you may use when you're working with your own web services. So this is a starting point to get you thinking about how can I process JSON data? How can I download image data? How can I deal with image data when I have different size thumbnails, when I have different size images? How does that all sort of fit into the big picture? And what do I need to be thinking about from a design perspective in my iPhone app to keep it responsive, uh, to keep the scrolling high performance in 60 frames a second? All right, so if you watch days 24, 25, 26, 28, and I believe it's 29, that's going to cover all of this web service stuff that you can do in this Swift course right now, right today. All that stuff's out there. All the source code works. It's uh, been super useful to a lot of students who have been interested in this space. Again, I'm going to go way more in depth using something like Parse or CloudMine or even the CloudKit. That has matured a little bit. I'm a little hesitant to jump into CloudKit just yet. Every time Apple launches something new, it's a little bit shaky, it's a little bit buggy, and I've been reading other people. They've been saying that CloudKit's getting a lot more reliable, so that's something that's exciting. The downside of CloudKit is that it sort of puts you only on iOS. So if you have uh, an app that you want to work across multiple devices, Parse or CloudMine are gonna be good options for you to, to look into. And it depends on, do you need secure data? Do you need data that's gonna be compliant with all the health regula regulations. If, the, if that's the type of app you need to build, you got to use cloudmine.me. If you're working on just some social app and you just want to try something out, Parse is a good option there and Facebook bought it. So they're, they're working on improving that and providing a lot of great documentation. Okay. So that's, that's kind of my update for Kickstarter. Um, I wanted to do this update. It's been on my mind for a while. I wanted to get it off my chest and put it out there. Now, there's two options that you can do. I understand that I promised this as a stretch goal, and maybe you signed up for the Kickstarter because I made that promise as the stretch goal. If that was the case, then I don't want to, to charge you for this update. But if you have had value and you're interested in learning the cutting edge techniques, and you've enjoyed this video, and you've enjoyed the new content that I've been producing, then I'm going to ask that you sign up for the, the paid versions of the courses. And I have the Kickstarter discount that I did in 2014. So if you want to get the bundle, it's $149. It gives you access to seven courses. Now, that's going to give you access to two courses that you potentially already backed. Those are the two Objective-C courses. And that's going to give you access to them uh, so you can get started with that. Um, but if you, if you didn't back those already, maybe you just backed the first course, you're going to get both of those plus the four new Swift courses. Now, two of them are, are currently available. The other two are upcoming. So the Real World Apps course is upcoming. And then I have a new one that I tagged on to the last year's campaign, which was for Apple Watch. And Apple's making an announcement on Monday. Uh, that would be March 9th. So I'm super excited. Uh, we're going to find out when we can buy the Apple Watch, when we can start making apps for them. They already have some beta SDKs out there. I've tried them out. There was a couple bugs in them, so I've been holding off. I, I did a series of seven videos on YouTube, and you could start with that if you really want to, though I think some of the code might not work anymore because Apple's been moving really fast. All right, so what you need to do is either sign up for one of the bundles. I've got the complete bundle for $149, or you can take the survey and you can let me know that you want access to these courses for free, and I'll, I'll gladly do that because you are a a paid Kickstarter backer, and I want to make sure that this is a good experience for you. All right, so that's all I have to say. Look down below for the two links that you can decide what you want to do, either pay for the new courses or request a, a coupon because you think that you deserve it because I haven't delivered on all the, the stretch goals, all right? So I just need your name, I need your email, and there's two quick questions and any comments or feedback that you might have that you want to just get out there, all right? Thanks for watching. And I hope you have a great day.